An actual mission to Mars is finally starting to feel like a real possibility, while it has been a dream practically since it was first discovered. Building multiple space stations, continued trips to the moon, and the first crewed mission to Mars by the 1980s are all of the jotted down plans for Mars. But NASA never sent humans to Mars in the 1980s. And here we are, 30 years later, still longing for the thin possibility. While private companies are building ever more audacious plans to get to Mars, NASA says it's serious about doing a manned mission one day. And fairly influential public enthusiasm for the Red Planet is riding high after the Curiosity rover's stunning landing and photo-rich mission. As with any major human excursion, whether it be climbing Mount Everest or traveling to the deepest point of the oceans, there will be several obstacles to overcome when we send people to Mars and bring them back home again. One reason for the obstacle is simple. Getting to Mars is hard. Before you can run, you need to walk. And before deep space exploration, you need to get off your planet. No rocket can lift off the Earth's surface and escape its gravitational pull to read space carrying the weight of a large spacecraft, astronauts, and all the supplies and materials required to get to Mars. It would take 70 or 80 takeoffs to assemble a Mars mission spacecraft using existing rockets. The recently unveiled space launch system should make the task easier, as the SLS will be the largest rocket ever flown, even bigger than the Saturn V that carried astronauts to the moon. While NASA has its own thing going on with the SLS, SpaceX is also polishing its new Falcon Heavy launch vehicle, which will have somewhat less cargo capacity than NASA's big rocket, but still much greater than what's around today. For a Mars mission, at least seven of NASA's new SLS rockets would be fired to deliver to orbit the people, supplies, and ships. And while SLS could be the key to the Red Planet, there are also other alternatives we could pursue. The sheer distance would be one of the biggest problems, with or without the rocket for a Mars voyage. Distance to Mars isn't always the same. The Earth and Mars orbit the Sun at distinct distances and speeds, so there are certain more optimal periods to travel between the two, particularly regarding the idea as to not just making it to Mars quickly, but making it back. The trains to Mars are every 26 months, and the last such window occurred in July 2020. To top it all off, there is a larger, roughly 15-year cycle when the window is even more favorable than others. The 15-year cycle makes going to Mars something of a one-trick pony in a way. Even with all the technologies to go to Mars, landing on Mars too is a fairly recently acknowledged problem. If the takeoff goes all well, the landing would still hitch the journey. Landing would need to be in a space of the size of a football field in length, depending on the propulsion system technology they go with and how many people ultimately go. Around anything from a little smaller than the International Space Station in size to seriously bigger. The vital tech to landing people on Mars is something called supersonic retropropulsion. Good news first, the testing shows that supersonic rockets are theoretically possible. Bad news, NASA is not working on this program anymore. While NASA is shaky on picking up testing for this again, other members of the private spaceflight business may be leapfrogging them. SpaceX is laboring to develop reusable rocket tanks that sink from orbit and land back at their launch pad. The company is prepping to test supersonic retropropulsion later this year, which could be used both on Earth and in an eventual Mars mission. Once we finally reach the ground, another likely barrier is the dust storms. The dust has done its job of being a major irritant on Earth and to astronauts on the moon. The dust was sharp and chafing on parts of astronauts' suits, and it got everywhere and irritated the eyes since no wind or other forces erode the particles on the moon. The trip out to Mars would probably take between seven and nine months, and humans would need to be protected the entire time. Humans, creatures that evolved to live in the Earth's atmosphere with the Earth's gravity, will have to go to cope with being in low gravity, proximity, and close environment situation on spaceships for several months of transit. Another issue would be how humans might be able to handle living in small, confined spaces for a long time without much outside contact. 
If you're tired of the food you're eating, you can't say, let's order a pizza, Rucker says. Mars may not seem like the best place to set up camp, considering the freezing temperatures and arid environment. But there is a wealth of materials on the red planet that astronauts could use to their advantage. Human missions to Mars often call for some sort of crop-growing capabilities. At first flush, the idea of farming on Mars seems like a reasonable plan. Astronauts are going to want fresh vegetables, and a farm could lessen the amount of freeze-dried food they might have to take. Currently, many different plans are hovering around. NASA has its design reference architecture, SpaceX and Inspiration Mars have their visions. Other space agencies are weighing in with their ideas, but at a point, one of these will have to be chosen as THE plan. No one knows how much a human mission will cost, but it will likely run to tens or even hundreds of billions of dollars. The plan would also have to be easygoing. The world is tough, and multi-year missions need to cope with revising political landscapes and economic downturns. All in all, the Martian Dust Devil is in the details, and the video summarizes that we currently lack the technology to get people to Mars and back. However, the real reason isn't necessarily beef with technology or innovation, it comes to, what else, politics. An interplanetary mission to Mars would likely be one of the most expensive and tough engineering challenges of the 21st century. The moon landing happened out of competition between the US and Russia. The US won the race and beat Russia to the moon. After those events transpired, there was no drive to push further, and space exploration lost its funding. A man managed to land and walk on the moon for the first time at a total budget of $20.4 billion for the Apollo program in 1969. Due to inflation, the estimated budget for today would be $109 billion. And the current budget for NASA is $19.6 billion. The federal budget for the USA for this year is $4.147 trillion. The current budget concludes one thing, i.e., it's a no-go. At the moment, NASA works on all kinds of things, which is far more research areas than back in the 1960s. They've had to build a few of these beautiful things, flew them, and cancel the project. The cancels occurred because the USA didn't see any point in advancing further. NASA keeps losing funding every year because people believe the whole why spend money and time up there when we have problems down here. It's sad because we have a ton of the latest technology and research advances that came and still come from the exploration of space. After a while, privatized space companies like SpaceX and others began to take shape and are now pushing for the exploration of our solar system by forcing the envelope and stirring up where we left off decades ago. It's a slow process, but eventually we'll get a person on Mars. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, let us know what you would like the next video to be about. I'll be reading you in the comments. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for future updates. See you soon.